Well, this week we've taken you inside the vehicle the Minnesota National Guard uses to rescue people who are trapped in the snow. The Guard's command center, where they plan out when and how they'll respond to winter emergencies, is right here in the metro. Tonight, Danny Spiewak takes us inside for a look at how their rescue teams navigate these intense winter storms. We've survived another winter storm. Tonight will be a restful evening for sure. Major Jeffrey Hoaglum with the Minnesota National Guard. Is there anything else we're missing? Earned this break. Yeah, we, we think we're, we're getting close to being done here. After a few long days on active duty at the Joint Operations Center in St. Paul. If we end today, are you bringing the SUSV back tomorrow? Although state patrol and local police responded to dozens of crashes and spinouts, they didn't end up needing the National Guard to assist with missions. The weather has been a little less severe than originally predicted. There's just been a lot less people on the roads. Compare that to the storm that hit just before Christmas when the Guard rescued 19 stranded drivers across the state. The Christmas travel push kept people on the roads even in adverse conditions. But this storm yeah. hit midweek with yeah. a lot of advance yeah. notice. And the constant messaging, I think, uh, allowed people to really just stay home and stay off the roads if they didn't need to be out there. But the guard was still ready with 17 small unit support vehicles stationed in areas of dangerous terrain. The flatter and the, and the blowing wind tend, tend, to, tend to lead to a more whiteout condition. Luckily, the situation never grew too dire. We're ending the state active duty response at 1600 today. Just another day at the office for the Minnesota National Guard. It's, it's very rewarding. One of the strengths of the Guard is, is that we, we live here, we work here, we serve here. Although the active duty response for this snowstorm is winding down, the National Guard will, of course, be monitoring any springtime flooding that may pop up in the next couple of months. In St. Paul, I'm Danny Spiewak, CARE 11 News.